Well, hello there my little goldies and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be quite different than what usually happens on this channel. Some of you requested more videos with Caleb and Alex in them and Caleb and Alex are my four-legged goldies. So we're going to be messing with the goldies today and I'll kind of tell you what we're going to do. But for those of you that are new here, let me just um, introduce everything. Uh, this channel is uh, is called Sharon Sanctuary. My name is Sharon and we have a lot of stuff on here with adult coloring like adult coloring books and art supplies that go along with them and, and so forth. But there's also some different things on here too like um, uh, I have the occasional fountain pen video as well as some journaling stuff, some planner things and um, even some yarn related stuff because I am a crocheter and I do knit but my knitting skills are not what my crochet skills are. So, but anyway, so this is um, Sharon Sanctuary where we uh, have a lot of areas of interest and we just kind of um, make videos as far as the hobbies that I do and uh, the occasional vlog and, and so forth. So anyway, today's video is going to be talking about um, a new endeavor that I'm going to be undertaking as well as messing with the, the goldies today. What I thought we would do, let me just kind of take you from start to finish what we're going to plan to do with this video. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer one. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about a new endeavor that I'm going to be undertaking and then um, what we'll do after that is we're going to brush the goldies and uh, and do a little bit of chat. So you've seen the color and gab videos, you've seen the crochet and gab videos, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and brush and gab and that's gonna go along with what I'm about to talk about now. So anyway, as you guys know, I have two golden retrievers. Uh, my real old guy is Caleb and um, he was my or he is, I, sh I shouldn't say was, but um, he was my leader dog, and he is now my retired leader dog. Um, I am visually impaired, and leader dogs, it's a place in Michigan that trains dogs to do guide work for people who can't see very well. And so Caleb is my retired worker, and Alexander Graham Bell, or Alex for short, is my current worker. And so Caleb, he is going to be 14 in February, and Alex is, oh my gosh, three and a half already. Holy cow. And I got him in September of 2017. Um, if you have been on my channel for a long time, you will actually have seen the video where I actually got him. But I will try to find it and link it in the description so you can look at that and that's my very first meeting with him and so yep he's been my sidekick ever since but anyway let's go ahead and get into the little project or endeavor that i'm going to be undertaking so <coughs> and you will have to pardon my coughing i'm still a little sick with this chest cold that just will not go away so you may have to, um, I'm probably going to have to take a, a drink of my water from time to time. So what my water, and I'm getting way off topic here, but um, what my water is, oh my gosh, this isn't for you. I got a, I got a little Alex nose under here. Oh my goodness, yes. So we're going to mess with you in a minute. So um, totally way off topic here, but you guys know that I've been doing keto since September. I've been doing the ketogenic lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, uh, since September because I'm trying to lose like 50 pounds and I've hit the 20 pound mark so I've got 30 more to go. But anyway, uh, so I have my, I, I try to drink a lot of water because when you're doing keto, well, drinking water is healthy anyway, but when you're doing keto, um, you need to do it more anyway because especially when you start out, your kidneys are flushing out a lot of um, electrolytes and salt and stuff. But anyway, uh, so this water, now, what I put in my water usually is I put in some electrolyte mix, and you're gonna have to pardon my icky looking thumbnail. Um, I actually broke one of my nail, I broke my nail last night, so I don't have anything on it, and when I went to cut it back, uh, I cut it a little bit too short, so uh, pardon my icky looking thumbnail, but anyway, um, <laughs> that's gonna have to get fixed. So anyway, I put this in my water, and it comes in these little packets. Let me try to get it. There we go. So I put one of these little packets in, um, and this is a soda stream bottle. I fill it up with water, and then I put one of these packets in it. And this one, there's different flavors of it, but this one here is blueberry. And this is um, keto friendly, keto recommended. I think it has maybe 
I don't think it even has any carbs in it. Um, I have to read the label again to see, but it either has like zero carbs or one carb. But anyway, so when I want to kind of spruce up my water a little bit, I will put that in there because um, it makes it taste better. Um, and it actually tastes like a sports drink, only not as sugary. So it's actually pretty good. So I'm going to end up drinking quite a bit of this, probably on camera because my my throat is still feeling just a little bit funky and uh, still kind of coughing up some junk. So try to keep as hydrated as, as we can. But anyway, <coughs> so back to the subject at hand. So my new endeavor, um, as I mentioned, I am a crocheter and I knit occasionally. And so I have been wanting to learn to make my own yarn, to spin up my own yarn. Um, yeah, you can buy yarn in the store. You can go to a yarn shop and you can buy like wool and merino and this and that. But um, for those of us that are actually interested in fibers like yarn and, and that kind of stuff, um, some people, not everybody, but some people want to dive into making their own custom yarn, meaning you get the, the raw fibers or the, the fibers uh, that hasn't been made up into yarn. You get the fibers and then you, um, you, you spin it up yourself. And that will require either a drop spindle or a spinning wheel. And so my husband for Christmas, now it is not here yet. Uh, you probably may have seen my haul video that I have up and I talked a little bit about it there too, but it's not here yet, but my husband got me a spinning wheel and I thought about dragging the iPad out and kind of showing you what the picture of it looks like, but I think I'm going to hold off and just show you what the wheel looks like when it actually comes. So my husband got me a spinning wheel for Christmas, although it's going to be here after Christmas, obviously, because um, <coughs> we had just ordered it like right before Christmas and they said like four to six weeks for shipping. Um, I actually talked to the lady that I got it from yesterday and she said a lot of times it won't even take that long, but they the company, which is called Spin Illusions, uh, they, they tell them to tell the customers like four to six weeks, you know, just in case, because what they do is they have to special order them and, and the company puts them together as the orders come in, I guess. So because spinning wheels really are not in such high demand these days. So yeah, it's such a niche thing that, um, you know, people aren't going to really carry them in their shops or anything. So anyway, um, I'm expecting to get it um, after the after the new year. I'm hoping between like January 5th and January 10th. That would be awesome because then it will be here in time for my birthday, which is January 12th. Yay. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I will show you the the wheel when it gets here. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. But it's a very, very cute little wheel. I've watched a lot of videos on it and a lot of research and, and stuff on it. But anyway, um, so my undertaking that I am looking to do is um, once I get the hang of how the thing works, because obviously I have absolutely no clue as to what happens with it or, you know, how to do it. Um, I've seen videos on it, but I've never tried it myself. <laughs> so I, it's a learning curve and I have a lot to learn, but my end goal that I want to do once I kind of get used to things and, um, and have some like practice stuff to work on is I want to take fur from Caleb and Alex and make yarn out of it. Now you're going, okay, Sharon, this is crazy. Why are you wanting to spin up your dog's fur? Well, believe it or not, and I've actually seen quite a few videos on it. I've read some articles and, and stuff on it, but um, it has actually, it's, it's actually quite, I guess, trendy to do now <laughs> if you are in that world. But, um, it's very, very possible, and Golden Retriever fur is um, a good uh, fur to spin up into yarn. Um, but they say to work with other stuff first, like actual wool, because the fibers are longer and it's a little bit easier to learn on. And then um, when you kind of graduate from that, then you can work with the dog fur because those fibers are quite short and that can get um, that can get a little messy and it's not as easy to work with, you know, so I've been told. So anyway, like I said, I want to take their fur and make it up into yarn so I can make sweaters and scarves and stuff, you know. And from what I have read and from what I have seen on the videos, um, it turns in, it's like golden retriever fur is going to make really, really, really soft, fluffy yarn. Let me just show you what I mean here. 
So I started collecting the fur from Caleb and Alex. So in this bag, um, I have Caleb's fur. And then in this bag here, I have Alex's fur. Now I'm gonna probably do another bag where I have like combined fur because I wanna experiment. Um, but even though Caleb and Alex are both golden retrievers, they have the, their fur is different in texture. Alex feels more like a cotton ball. He's very soft, whereas Caleb's fur, um, he has like coarser kind of, I guess, heavier fur. So anyway, he, this is this is what I've been collecting off of Mr. Alex. So what I do is I brush him, and then I clean the brush out, and I will put the fur into the bag here. And I'm gonna keep collecting his fur, you know, until I get a bunch of it. And I'm, it's probably gonna be an ongoing thing, you know, to keep collecting his fur. Um, this is unwashed fur. So what you would do is, um, because you're, you're probably thinking, okay, this is gonna smell like dog. You're gonna have a sweater and you're gonna smell like, you're gonna smell like a dog. Well, what you would do is when you get enough of the fur, um, and his fur is actually really fly away. So you have to kind of be a little careful with it because it's gonna go everywhere. But what you would do is, in, when you get enough of it, you would wash it in some dog shampoo, you know, to get all the oils and all the doggy dander and what, whatnot off of it. And, um, and then you would let it dry, like you wash it in dog shampoo. Then you lay it out like on a, a towel, like an old towel or something to dry, you know, something that you're not gonna be afraid to get fur all over. Um, because actually Alex, um, like after, right after Alex gets a bath, like his fur, I kid you not, he feels like a cotton ball. He actually feels like a cotton ball. It's crazy. He is so soft. And he's got the real soft fur, which means it's, it's, it's cottony. It's, it's real fly away. Like his fur is real soft and, and, and fly away. So, um, and already there's like strands of his fur kind of stick into this bag because there's static electricity here so his fur is kind of sticking everywhere but anyway so after you would wash it and after it's dried um let me just kind of show you what you would do to kind of prepare it a little bit so i have two dog brushes and we're going to use these like cards like you know you've probably heard the term carding wool and you have like hand you have cards that you would card the wool well, we're going to use these two brushes to show you how that is going to work so we're going to load up a brush with some of his fur and we're going to try to keep it so it stays in the bag because i'm on my table and we're going to get like fur everywhere here but but what you would do is you would load up a brush and then you would just kind of comb whoop, let me get it on there a little bit more you have to kind of really get it into the bristles because otherwise it's going to come off so and you can kind of push it in there so then you would take your second brush and just kind of comb through it and it's going to push the fibers all in one direction so it makes it easier to spin okay and once you kind of get it off the one brush you can you can also go at it this way too and uh, you know just make sure all the fibers kind of go in one direction keep combing until until you're satisfied just go through it a few times here and then now I got normally what happens um, is it would kind of go onto the one brush and which it kind of did so then you can just kind of take it and try to gently kind of peel it off of there and you can make you can roll it up a little bit and you can make like a little a little um roll lag okay like so and this is like pretty tedious going now there's like some stuff in there so again like make sure you wash it first and then you do it because like you want to pick like all the stuff that you don't want in the fur but that's the general idea you get it to go into one direction and then you can make like a little roll lag with it and then and then it's it'd be a lot like easier to spin you just kind of like um you would kind of pull it you know this is called drafting meaning that you kind of pull it uh so you get so it kind of comes apart a little bit and then you would feed it into the into the wheel okay so that is the general idea of what you would do with it okay and 
like I said, this is not really for neat nicks because <laughs> especially Alex's fur, it's pretty fly away. And I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna clean the brush out all the way and put the fur back into the bag. Okay. So and we'll do a better job of this actually when the fur is clean and actually when I get ready to to work with it. And I might need this brush, I don't think is going to be stiff enough for it, so I might need to get another kind of brush to actually do the carding, but um, that's pretty much how you would do it. Yeah, this is your fur, Alex. Yeah, you got fur. This is fur, your fur. Okay, so let me go ahead and put the brushes aside. Okay, so that is Alex's fur. That's what I have so far, and like I said, it's going to be an ongoing thing to collect it and, um, and prepare it and stuff. And he is very prolific. Both him and Caleb are. They, these guys, they shed like no tomorrow, okay? <laughs> and so there's always, always, always fur to be collected and fur to be had. Now this here is Caleb's fur. Let me show you what I got for Caleb. And we have, we got quite a bit of fur for Caleb. So it is quite a bit of a different texture. It's coarser, um, but still soft. I mean, don't get me wrong. He is soft, but he's just not as soft as Alex and his fur, especially in his feathers, it's longer. Um, so he's going to have denser, coarser fur to work with, but here's what I have for Caleb so far. And then, like I said, I'm going to get another bag and, um, experiment and put, um, both types of fur in one collection and see how that works. See how, um, see how different the yarn is for that. And uh, so I will keep you updated on how all that turns out. Maybe we'll do some of that on camera once I kind of get the hang of the wheel. <coughs> you know, once I actually get the hang of the wheel and actually learn how it's done and stuff and we can work with, with this. But how I know whose fur is whose, um, I put Caleb's fur in the white bag because he's an old guy and so he has a white face that makes it easier for me to remember. And then um, Alex's fur I have in this brown bag here okay and uh these bags just kind of come from our local um grocery store sometimes we'll get them from walmart you know we just keep like whatever bags that we get like when we get groceries and, and things like that so anyway um that is my new undertaking and i will keep you guys updated on how and i have fur all over me now um on how that goes now, another thing I want to show you guys, since we are messing with Goldies, and maybe this will be a little bit educational, um, because some people may be really daunted by giving dog um, medication, especially when you have to put a pill down them. Um, now, let me show you what we give Caleb. We actually had to change up his meds a, a little bit because we had a scare with him in October. As I said, he is going to be 14 in February, and he has some pretty severe um, arthritis going on in his hips and sometimes he has a really 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 hard time getting up and down um, we've noticed it especially over this past year and as i said we had a little scare with him in october um, he got he got to the point where um, he was really having a hard time getting up off the kitchen floor in fact there was a couple times where he just he couldn't get up on his own so we had to help him up and uh, that really freaked us out. So we had to take him in, and so we got a different, um, well, not a different one, but we got, we got a new medication to add to his little routine here. So let me just show you what we give him. Now, the new medication we got is um, gabapentin, okay? And we just, we get this from our vet's office, and it's a capsule, okay? It's a capsule. So this is not a chewable. You actually have to um, put that down him. And I will show you how to do that. Um, as I said, this is this could be an educational video because some of you may feel daunted about giving dog um, giving your dog medication um, because you're thinking, oh, you gotta put, oh, I gotta put my hand in their mouth. Ew, you know, he's gonna bite my fingers off. Blah blah blah. Well, um, they won't. And I'll show you I'll show you how I do it. And then the thing that we give him for his arthritis. Now this gabapentin is a pain reliever. So it helps with the arthritis, but it's, it's more of a pain reliever and um, it kind of helps with the discomfort like when, when he's hurting. But the, the thing that, the main thing that we give him for the arthritis is the Remedil, okay? So he gets the gabapentin um, twice a day in the morning and, and at night. And then he also takes 
Remedil, which is a kind of an anti-inflammatory. Ah, you want, yeah, you want it, don't you, Caleb? <laughs> yeah, there's your, he's got his nose over here like, I know what that sound is. So he used to take, what we used to do is we used to break these in half, and he used to take half in the morning and half at night, but we've had to up it because of the scare that we had with him. And so now he gets a whole one in the morning and a whole one at night. And then we also give him um, chewable glucosamine. And he also gets this along with his Remedil and his Gabapentin, okay? Let me show you what those look like. So it's just these little chewables, okay? And yeah, Caleb, you want it, don't you? <laughs> and uh, so he gets, he gets one of those in the morning and one of those at night. And I've kind of held off giving him his meds for a little while because I wanted to show you guys what we do. So we're gonna take out the glucosamine and the and the um, Remedil. And then I will take the gabapentin here. So we're gonna go ahead and give him the capsule first because he thinks of the chewables as a treat <laughs> and he gets all excited. In fact, he will, oh my gosh, he will drool all over me. Ugh. I love him to bits, but I don't like the drool. <laughs> so let me show you how I give him the capsule, okay? And then we'll give him the chewables, which is real easy. But let me, let me get him over here. Okay, guys, so we got Caleb here. We got Mr. Caleb here. And yeah, I think he knows what's going on. So we're gonna take the capsule and we're gonna give it to him. Come here, buddy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, and I hope you guys can see this, but um, you need to, um, open his mouth and how I normally do it is I kind of put this hand on top of his nose Okay, and then I'll just take my finger and just kind of Gently just kind of pull down on his jaw and we'll just stick it in there You want to get it um, as far back as you can on the back of his tongue And then you can kind of rub his throat a little bit, but he's really good about swallowing it. So um, you, you don't really have to do too much with him and then um, after he gets that then um, he will get the then he'll get the chewables like so well, there we go. And then afterwards, I have to go wash my hands because I have I have old golden slobber on it. But yeah, Caleb, there we go. It's a good boy. <laughs> so I'm going to go wash my hands and I will be right back. Okay, guys, a couple more things before we actually get into brushing the goldies. So right now you're kind of looking at my yarn basket because I want to just kind of talk to you guys for just a sec. But um, you'll have to pardon the little twig that you probably saw on the floor next to Caleb when I was giving him his pill. I didn't know it was there until I was editing the video. But what happens is, is when you have a golden um, and when they get to run around outside, we have a really nice fenced in backyard. They're for especially their feathers becomes a little catch-all for all kinds of outside things. I mean, we are constantly picking stuff up like leaves off the floor. Um, there's little twigs that they bring in and we're also picking it out of their fur. So, you know, around here, um, there's always the presence of like little sticks and, and things like that. So pardon the, the twig that you probably saw on the floor. And then also, um, you know, that's, that's just kind of how it is around here. But, and then also, uh, when I was given Caleb his pills, I don't think I did a real good job of describing everything. Now, I did describe like how I gave it to him and stuff, but um, you'll probably see in the video that how you know the pill has gone down is... Um, is when uh, their tongue licks, like when they lick and you kind of see their tongue come out and they lick their lips. That's how you know it goes down. Um, and that's how you know like they've swallowed it. And so the trick is that you want to be reasonably quick and then try to get it as far back on their tongue as you can. And then um, you, you close their mouth and you can kind of rub their throat a little bit uh, to get them to swallow. But Caleb is really good about swallowing stuff. Like as long as you get it pretty far back there, um, he will, he has no trouble swallowing it. There's a, there, there's always a, a time or two where I didn't get it back there as far as I could have. And then he has a little bit of trouble. But um, if you get it back there as far as you can, um, then they're going to be able to swallow it pretty good. And then um, they will lick their lips and then that will tell you that it has gone down. And then of course you saw him get his chewables. Okay, so I will meet you back here in just a sec and we will get to brushing. Okay guys, so we have Alex here and we're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and get started brushing him and we'll chat a little bit. So uh, you're probably not gonna see my face too much because I'm gonna hide behind I'm gonna hide behind Mr. Goofy here, but anyway, so um, we just use this little brush here and then I'm going to take 
put this bag here and we're going to collect this fur. So anyway, I hope you guys had a really, really nice Christmas if you celebrate that. And uh, we didn't really do too much. I was still kind of getting over my cold. And uh, so we just, we had a quiet day. Like usual, it was just um, the hubby and the critters here. And I made a big pot of beef burgundy, which is the way I make it. It's pretty much like beef stew, but um, instead of just cooking it in like all water, um, we got some uh, burgundy wine to, ooh, um, to cook in it. And so basically all it is is just um, some beef stew meat and some water, um, a bit of the burgundy wine, and then some garlic and some, um, ooh, you're drooling, boy some uh, <clears throat> beef stew flavoring, um, you know, just to give it a little bit of extra pop, and uh, a few beef bouillon cubes. You throw it all in the crock pot and you, um, you cook it up all day. You just, let it, you just let it go on low all day. And uh, it cooks the meat through and then uh, you get all kinds of flavor in it. And then you can serve it over rice or um, mashed potatoes. And uh, <clears throat> We got some brown rice that we cooked with it and uh, yeah, not keto friendly, but I'm kind of, uh, I've been a little bit lax like um, over the holidays and so I've allowed myself a few extra things that I normally would not allow myself. <laughs> and, um, but you know what, I'm still losing. Um, I think sometimes you have to kind of shock your system at times because your your body gets a little complacent and I plateaued out for a little bit so um, I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit to see if it would get me going again and so like I said I have hit the 20 pound mark and uh, I'm looking to lose 30 more and I'm not getting out as much fur out of him as I thought I would but um, that is okay uh, let's see where did that where did that comb go whoops ah! Oh, come here, Alex. I know, it scared you. Come here. Get up. I know, it scared you. I bumped the waste can. And uh, I'm going to just clean out what I have here. So, anyway, um, are you guys doing anything special for New Year's? New Year's Eve? We are not. We just hang out. I guess we've kind of turned into old farts. <laughs> but... We don't really like to go anywhere on, especially on New Year's Eve, because it's when all the crazies are out and people are getting drunk and, and just being really nuts. So we just, we just stick around home and I usually just do my yearly ritual, I guess, and um, I turn on some Twilight Zone. I used to watch the Twilight Zone Marathon on the Sci-Fi Channel and I think they still probably have it on there, but as of right now, like we don't have any kind of cable or satellite hookup. We used to have direct TV, but it got to be really expensive. So we turned it off. Oh gosh, I want to say like last year. Yeah, I think it was last year we turned it off. And so we never got, um, I figured like if we want any kind of um, TV service or whatever, um, we have a Roku and I can always get a streaming TV service. But I haven't really had the interest to, to watch like any um, TV, like what I have here in my collection is movies and, and DVDs and stuff of old shows. But anyway, going back to the whole Twilight Zone thing, um, I um, would always used to watch it on the Sci-Fi Channel when it played because they'd always have a Twilight Zone marathon on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. But, uh, <clears throat> but they'd always have the commercials and it would always be the edited versions. Um, you didn't get, you didn't get the entire full episode you'd always have cutscenes that weren't there anymore so anyway what I started doing and I have DVDs of them plus if you are an Amazon Prime member um, you can watch uh, there's different things that you can watch on there for free if you have a Prime membership and Twilight Zone is one of those so I will grab the iPad and I will spoil myself and just kind of curl up in bed <laughs> and um, or um, get on the Amazon Fire TV and watch it here on the on the big TV. But I will turn on a Twilight Zone. Um, I'll do a whole Twilight Zone thing, and I will pick and choose which episodes I want to see. And uh, and that's that. 
And so that's probably what I will do. Um, and I'm going to take the comb and just kind of comb under his ears a little bit. He gets, sometimes he will get tangles uh, um, under his ears. And when I collect the fur, I will not keep the, I won't keep the tangles. Like I'll just keep the, you know, the fur that comes out of the brush. But the, the like if I find mats or anything, um, those I will, I will just put in the waste can. Because um, it's really hard to untangle those. And I figure with collecting the fur and having whatever to spin, I don't need the I don't need the tangles. I don't need I don't need the extra hassle of trying to untangle the tangles. <laughs> so I will throw away the little mats if I find any. And uh, oh, Alex, I don't know why you're drooling so much. Holy smoke! Ugh, drooling on my leg. Ugh. I'm getting his fur in my mouth. Ugh. So when you brush a golden, <laughs> make sure that when um, make sure that you are wearing something that you don't mind getting all furry because it is a furry little project here. <coughs> and uh, ugh, I'm getting it in my mouth um, <coughs> because you will get um, you will get fur on whatever it is that you are wearing. Okay, let's move you to the side. Okay, come here. Come here. And sometimes, like, I have to just kind of grab him and just kind of move him a little bit to position him where I want him to be. Um, especially, like, when I'm looking to get his hind end. Um, otherwise, I have to become a contortionist. <laughs> Which sometimes I have to anyway, but, you know, um, it's easier. Uh, if I can just kind of position him where I want him to. Now, what he will do um, when I'm when I'm brushing his back end, like he'll just he'll kind of he'll turn around and just sort of like stare at me. Like you can't really see his head on camera because um, <clears throat> right now he's got it turned and he's just kind of like eyeing me, like you're messing with my tail. Yes, you're messing with my tail. <laughs> and right now I'm combing his feathers. Sometimes his feathers, like I said. Um, the feathers seem to be the the fur that catches like all the uh, like all the little uh, leaves or twigs or whatever like if, if they've been running outside and so forth. Um, so uh, when I go to prepare this fur, like when I go to wash it and stuff, um, and when I clean it out of the brush, I will pick out like all of the little uckies that I don't want in the fur <laughs> and just you know put them in the in the waste can and yeah you got a little twig underneath there there we go see I'm like always constantly picking stuff out of this fur and <clears throat> I've actually seen I've seen a lot of videos um, you know because I've been like I said very interested in doing this spinning and so um, I've been watching a lot of videos um, in relation to spinning yarn, and um, okay, what did I do with that comb? Uh, and you can get like in in terms of of wool, you can get uh, fibers that have been prepared, like that have already been carded and prepared, and and so forth. Um, or you can actually get, um, if you want to actually get the, the actual raw fiber that hasn't been cleaned, you know, that hasn't been messed with at all. And what did I do with that comb? Oh my goodness. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. Um, so you can, you can actually get the raw fibers. And the raw fibers, the, the raw stuff actually have the, um, what did I do with that comb? Holy crap. Um, it actually has the um, all the dirt and stuff in it that that sheep will get into. Um, so there's like all different kinds of seeds um, that you like as you spin it. Well, actually, um, if you get the raw fibers, like um, you would, like some people would just go ahead and wash it up, pick out all the seeds, all the dirt and stuff, you know, that's that's in there. Um, but even if you do that, you're probably going to miss something. You know, there's probably going to be something that shows up in there, and then you you find it as you spin it. And so, um, the, uh, a lot of people will find like 
the, you know, just little stuff in there as they spin, and so then they'll pick it out. And uh, sometimes I get that with, with his fur, like, um, I try to pick out as much as I can as I'm brushing him and so forth, but um, sometimes um, when I'm cleaning out the brush, I will find stuff that got into it, and then I'll, I'll do my best to pick out as much as I can. And I'm sure that when I go to wash this and, um, and card it and stuff, um, I will find uh, some other just little stuff in there, but, you know, we will deal with it. And, uh, just, yeah, you still got, you still got a leaf in there. Ugh. He gets, he gets like little leaves stuck in his feathers. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, like Caleb's fur, it will catch, it will catch anything under the sun. He's got, now Caleb, he's got the fur that just will not quit. And uh, because his feathers are super long and they will catch everything, 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 everything. So I think we are just about done with Alex. But yeah, like I was saying, he will turn his head and just kind of look at me like, you're messing with my tail. <laughs> but he's very good about being brushed. Now, um, Alex's personality, like, he's really curious about stuff. And, like, if there's something going on in the other room or something, and, and if he thinks he's got to be in the middle of it, um, then he'll, you know, then he'll want to go in there and, and, uh, and check things out. But... Otherwise, you know, he's very, very good about um, about being brushed. He'll he'll stand still like this, and um, you know, he won't uh, he won't say too much. You know, he'll just, of course, uh, um, after I get done with him, he you know he always loves it when I say, oh, good boy, good boy, you know, because then I'll love him up, and then um, and then especially like if if um, if I find some mats like in the fur, and and if I have to do a lot of like detangling and stuff, oh. Lifting the leg, <laughs> lifting the leg, yeah, silly boy. Um, so if I find some, um, like if I have to do some pretty good detangling or something, um, then I'll give him a treat because you know it's uh, that's not fun to have to sit there and and be detangled, you know. But um, really, this fur isn't too bad today. Um, they both got a bath at the beginning of December. Um, I don't bathe them too often. Like if you do it too often, their fur, their coat will dry out, their skin will dry out, and that's not good for them. So <clears throat> we try to do it like every, you know, maybe two, three months or so. And, um, or if they kind of, you know, get that, start getting that, that, that doggy smell, or if they start to feel just a little bit too oily, you know, then um, then I will put them in the bathtub. And so what we have rigged up for that is is uh, in one of the bathrooms we have a, a bathtub in there, and then we have one of those um, handheld nozzles that that we use. Actually, that I use because I'm usually the one that, that does the bath. Um, actually, when we did Caleb, or when I did Caleb this past time, um, because he's ha he he has a real hard time standing up in the tub. Um, you know, because it's a slippery surface. So I started putting um, towels like on the bottom of the tub to see if that would help things along. And oh, there's the comb. And uh, it helped a little bit, but he still had a hard time. <coughs> oh, not done yet. Don't go. And uh, so what we did was. Uh, because he had a hard time standing up, he would he would kind of try to sit, and so then it was hard to rinse off his underside and stuff. So I had to get John to kind of hold him up, um, and then he held him while I rinsed him. Uh, he had to kind of hold him up like by the, uh, kind of underneath his tummy so he'd be able to stand up, and then I rinsed him. But um, So yeah, that was kind of hard. Um, now, neither one of them fight me like when they go to get a bath. They don't necessarily like it. I mean, they like, you know, they don't mind the water, I guess, but, you know, they're like, oh, bath time, you know. Um, it's not really their favorite thing, but um, they're both very, very good at, at standing still for it. You know, they don't fight me or anything. They're, they're very good boys about it. Um, and, uh, oh, my gosh, I think it was last yeah, wasn't it last summer, dear, when, when you took the hose and were spraying them? 
you know. <laughs> um, when uh, Alex got sprayed, um, was it Alex that, that just stood there and took it, or was he the one that bit the water? I don't know. I think Alex was the one that just stood there and took it. And uh, I didn't see it, but John told me about it. And uh, Alex, he just stood there and just took it like he was like, ah, that feels good, ah. And uh, Caleb, when he got sprayed, um, I guess he liked it pretty good too. He, he, he was wanting to play with the water, so he was biting at the water. <laughs> and I wished I would have seen it and got it on film. It sounded really funny. <laughs> so maybe when the when the when the weather warms up and uh we'll have to maybe try to catch it on on film oh you got another little what that's just a a little bump you've got on you okay yeah, those are just little bumps all right alex i think we're done with you yeah i think we're done with you okay Good boy, Alex. Good boy. Such a good boy. Oh, such a good boy. Oh, such a good boy. Silly boy. Silly boy. Okay, I'm going to stop and restart the camera because uh, I'm going to clean out this brush and put this fur in the bag. And I'm going to stop and restart the camera because this stops like every 29 minutes and I don't know how long this is recorded. So I don't want to start on Caleb and then, um, <clears throat> and then have the camera stop on me so um i will meet you back here in just a minute with um with caleb and then we will brush we'll brush caleb all right guys so here we are with caleb come here a little closer so here we are with caleb and you're just going to see his back in for just a, a little bit because um, i have him facing me so we're going to just go ahead and start with his beard now he's got a very very long beard and long feathers and stuff um but this guy he is going to be 14 in february and ah uh, yes now um caleb is very good about letting me brush him i mean they're both very good about being brushed and uh but caleb he will um caleb he's a big kisser he will give lots and lots and lots of kisses and so as I brush him, he will give all kinds of kisses. <clears throat> and sometimes he will get quite a bit of tangles like underneath his ears, but so far, um, he looks pretty good. Okay. Now, you probably saw me um, earlier. Uh, you're probably wondering what my finger was doing kind of close to his eye. He gets... Um, with him being older now, he gets quite a few eye boogers, and so I was cleaning off him an eye booger. He gets those eye boogers. Oh, I found a mat here. We got to get that out. There we go. Now again, with his fur, I will keep the regular fur, but I will not keep the I won't keep the little mats because we can have better fur to collect and spin with. Okay. So um, anyway. What have you all been up to? I know I spoke about what we did for Christmas and what I plan to do for New Year's, but what have you guys all been up to? I do hope you all are doing well. And um, what are your plans for next year, for 2020? <laughs> you guys remember that news show, it was called 2020. I don't think it's on anymore, but um, how many of you guys remember that news show 2020? And so we're going to collect Caleb's fur in this white bag here. Okay. Um, make sure we don't lose that. All right, come here, Caleb, a little closer. Come on, come on, come on, a little closer so we can get you. Okay, we're going to do his front paws or his front legs, I mean. He's got some real long feathers like on his, on all of his legs. And he has a hard time. I used to be able to pick up his, his uh, front legs and do them, but he's got a little bit of a hard time um, balancing himself, you know, now that he's got the trouble with the, with the arthritis, he's got a hard time. So sometimes what I'll do with him is I'll make him lie down and I'll put him on one side and then I'll brush him that way. And then, when I get done, come here, Caleb. Come on, come on, boy. 
Then when I get done with, with that, then I will gently just kind of turn them over and get the other side. Um, but we'll try to get him to just sit down or stand up as much as he can. Okay. So, okay. Come here, boy. Let's get your sides. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Now you'll be able to see his face a little bit, and I'll just kind of go down his body. Actually, he's not really too bad. His fur isn't too bad. Um, it's been a little bit since I've brushed him. Um, and now you want to, oh, I'm going to use that waste can. You want to, I'm going to move that out of the way because I keep bumping into it. You do want to um, keep them brushed regularly because otherwise they will tangle quite a bit. And there's been times that Caleb has been very tangled. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, they look, they look so beautiful when they're all brushed up. They do, they do, they do. Okay. I don't think it's going to take us long to do him. Now you could, you could just spend hours and hours straight just brushing and brushing and brushing and there's still going to be fur that's going to come out. Um, but I'll go until, uh, until I think his coat looks good. But see how much fur we have in that brush. You guys, can you guys see that? So we're going to clean it out with the comb and we're going to put the fur into Caleb's collection bag because we will keep this to spin up. Now there are some little twigs in it, so I'm going to pick out what I don't want. And we'll just put them in the waste can. I could just wait and do it all later, but um, when I find some obvious ones in here, you know, ones that I can get to pretty easily, I will pick it out. Because then I won't have to do it later. Yeah, he's got all kinds of little twigs stuck in the fur there. Okay, so there's another chunk. Okay. So, keep going. But, yeah, he, uh, poor Caleb, he, he tries, but it, he's, he's pretty, his hips bother him quite a bit now. Um, he has slowed down quite a bit. We've really noticed it in, over this past year. He had a little tangle right there. We've noticed it especially over this past year. And, uh, so that is why we have had to adjust his meds. But he tries. He will still play with Alex quite a bit. And uh, yeah, he'll still play with Alex quite a bit. And um, he tries to play with his ball. I'm not going to keep that hunk of fur because it had a bunch of tangle in it. Um, but he will try. And he's obviously still very sweet. But he. Um, he does a lot of, now he just kind of does a lot of laying around and sleeping <laughs> and eating. He's a piggy. He's still a piggy. And after we have our dinner, boy, he, uh, he drinks a lot of water. He was always, uh, I call him a camel because he always drank a lot of water. And oh my gosh, he still does. Like he'll get done with his dinner. Um, and then after he comes in from going outside, you know, to do his thing, then he'll come back in, like after he pees, he'll come back in and he, he will attack that water bowl like crazy. <laughs> and uh, he will drink and drink and drink and drink. And so we always have to tell him, hey, leave some for the fish because the fish won't have any more water. And we have to watch him because we don't want him to drink so much that he'll puke it up. He will sometimes like regurgitate his food because he eats it too fast. I don't know what we're going to do with you, boy. Yeah, what are we going to do with you, boy? Hmm? What are we going to do with Caleb? So, I'm not getting as much off of him as I thought I would. I tend to get more, um, I did get quite a bit off of him, but I, I thought I would get a little bit more off of him because uh, I haven't really brushed him since... Christmas and today is the 28th 
I think I brushed him a little bit on Christmas Eve. But um, he hasn't really gotten... I've been a little lax with him. <laughs> um, but I thought I would get more off of him. But I have not. Okay. Alright. So I'm going to try to get him to stand up so I can get his back in. Alright, Caleb, can we get up? Can we get up? Can we get to your feet? I'll try to to put you like that. Okay. Try to get his back end. He kind of gets a little unsteady, so um, I have to hold him a little bit. I hold him as best I can while I'm brushing him. But sometimes, oh yeah, see sometimes he'll get a little unsteady and then I have to kind of push him back up a little bit. But um, just be careful with him, you know, because he, uh, he does get sore. And his tail, oh my gosh, he's got like this, like this bottle brush tail that, that is the main thing that gets really tangled on him. Oh, another thing we had to do with him too, um, and this was in, I think we did this like in November, um, he had to go into the vet to get, uh, he had like a lump like on, on his back, left leg I think it was, and it got like really big like very fast and it got to the point where it was just like dangling off of him but it was attached only by just a little a little piece of skin it really wasn't embedded in him but it was big it got big like really fast and it was hard it was real hard to the touch and it was just dangling off of him so we took him in and he had to have that taken off and uh, they sent that in for biopsy and it turned out to be okay it was benign it was just one of those benign lumps. And, uh, but it didn't feel like, uh, they're called lipomas, it didn't feel like one of those lipoma uh, fatty lumps that older dogs get. It was hard to the touch. Whereas the, the traditional fatty lump, the lipoma, it will um, feel, you know, rather kind of soft and fatty. <laughs> but this was hard. But they were able to get it off real easily because, like I said, it was just attached by a piece of skin. And so they didn't even have to put him out. They just give him a, um, a local. And uh, he didn't even have to take any kind of pain pills or anything for it. They had it bandaged up. And um, they didn't even have to take any stitches out. They put in the dissolving stitches. And uh, that was the end of that. And he never, he never flinched, he never complained or anything about it. Okay. So, as you can, you might be able to hear the brush just kind of going through the tail, but his tail gets, like I said, his tail gets uh, really tangled. And he's got a very bushy tail. He's got, Caleb has very thick feathers. He's just got the, the kind of fur that won't quit. And I think it's changed a bit since he got older, too. Like, the fur kind of changes a little bit as they get older. Um, I mean, he's still got magnificent fur, but when he was younger, boy, he really had magnificent fur. He really did. Now, Abby's fur, um, Abby was my first golden. Now, Alex makes my fourth leader dog. Caleb was my third leader dog. Abby was my second, but she was my first golden. And Charlie was... An Australian blue healer. Charlie was my first leader dog and, uh, and I'm, I'm just picking the little twigs and dirt and stuff out of the fur I cleaned out of the brush. Um, but Abby, um, oh my gosh what was I saying? Oh my gosh the train left the station. <laughs> um, Yeah, okay. Abby's fur, when she got older and when she started getting sick with her cancer, she died of lung cancer. Um, her fur was, was, was looking, um, you could tell she was an old dog uh, because her fur was, was looking pretty, um, how would you, how would you have described Abby's fur, you know, when she was kind of getting toward the end, dear? It was just real scraggly, like just real, uh, 
it was it was old dog fur you know it just it, it wasn't it didn't have the it didn't have the shine it used to it didn't have the it didn't have the the wonderful golden uh, texture that you would find in a golden retriever it was just it was real brittle I guess and it was just real just it was it was just old dog fur you know and uh, so it does change as they get older I mean Caleb he still has magnificent fur but it has changed um, I don't think his feathers are as thick anymore but yeah they are still thick <laughs> he still has thick fur that will never change and there's a spot that, that when I brush over, I don't care how many times I brush over, his leg will go. Like, he's got a twitchy spot. Okay, Caleb, can you get up? We'll get your feathers. Come on, can you get up? Come on, can you get up? Oh, let's go back here. I'll try to get your feathers. We got your tail. And get your feathers, and then we'll be done with you. And then, and then you both will get a treat. I'll give you both a treat. Because you guys were such good boys on camera. You know, you guys were such good boys on camera. Hopefully you guys can see him. Let's back here just a little bit because I can get to you. Oh, oh, come on, back up. Oh, come on, Caleb, let's back it up. And I try to just position him where I need him to be, but, you know, I just, I just try to be a bit more careful with him because of his hips but he uh, he's a trooper gotta give him that he's a trooper right dear yep. he's still a Caleb is probably the, the gentlest Caleb is a real gentle soul Caleb is a real gentle soul so Corey you get to see Caleb on camera and Corey you she need to just, fart, boy. Yeah, don't fart on me. I'm kind of lifting up his tail so I can get to his feathers. But Corey just loves Caleb. And uh, we have a, a friend that's in the Lions Club with us. Um, her name is Paula. And Paula, oh my gosh, like she loves Alex. And Alex loves Paula. <laughs> and uh, so sometimes like, you know, after the meeting, if we're going to stay a while, because sometimes we'll stay and and uh, we'll go downstairs for a beer and uh, but before we do that you know we'll just kind of stand up there and talk after the meeting and stuff and um, <clears throat> Alex loves to play with Paula so what I will do is I'll, I'll take Alex's harness and leash and stuff off of him and uh, we'll just kind of let him let him let him act a fool and uh, Paula enjoys playing with him so Alex loves Paula and Paula loves Alex right here right I got John home with us today. It's a it's a Saturday. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hi everybody. So he's just hanging out on the couch. He's going through a bunch of like old paperwork and stuff and garbaging like what we don't need and stuff. Sometimes we will try to um, on weekends we'll try to go through stuff that we want to get rid of and. Uh, it's funny because like when you're a pack rat and you're married to a pack rat then you have to go through your stuff <laughs> later on and uh, decide what you want to get rid of and it can be a pain in the keister a pain in the keister but i think we got you caleb i think we got you i think you guys are all done now you guys are pretty boys we're going to clean out the brush and i think that this is going to be the end of the video um, yep, this is going to be the end of the video because we got them both brushed and they're both looking pretty spiffy now. And we're going to collect more fur. I'll just go through and just pick out the, the twigs. It's really amazing like what you find in the fur as you're cleaning out the brush and stuff. And sometimes you don't feel everything as you're, as you're brushing them, but it, it comes out and then you have to... Um, before I got the interest of wanting to spin this up, um, I would just throw it in the garbage can, you know, just clean the brush out, throw it all away. But now that I'm collecting the fur, um, I'm going through it, and it's just crazy what um, what I find in there to pick out of it, like little twigs and little sticks and and stuff. And, uh, all right. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this different 
type of video. And you did get to see the Goldies, and if you want to see more of them, just let me know. Um, I did say that I would make a video of how Alex works, because it's hard to film the video. It's, it's hard to work him and, and actually film him working at the same time. So when we get a, a nice day, and actually we should have done it a couple days ago. I didn't think about it. But um, when we get a nice day, um, I'll put Alex in work mode, and then um, I will get... John to film us. That way we can show you how he works. I do have a clip of me working Caleb right before he was about to retire because when I when I was applying to get Alex, um, I had to make a travel video so they could make sure that I could walk okay and, and stuff. So um, I had Caleb in his harness and was working him. This was like Caleb was still officially working at that time, and this was before this was before he retired. I was applying to get Alex, and uh, so I do have a clip of of uh, Caleb working and I don't know how long the video is but um, if you guys are interested in, in seeing that it's a couple of years old like I said because I got Alex in September 2017 this was filmed I want to say probably in maybe June or July of 2017 so um, I can upload it though if you want to see it um, I have no problems with that so if you want to see that um, let me know and I will make sure that I upload it and then I'll make sure that I make one of Alex working so you guys can see that and we'll get a nice we'll get a nice sunny day to do that so be on the lookout for that and like I said if you want to see more of these guys let me know and we will do that and what's coming up is I have I'll have a crochet and gab um, and I will have I have a, another coloring book that was sent to me for review so we'll be seeing that in the next couple days or so and then, um, like I said, when the spinning wheel comes, we'll look at that. And once I get the hang of it, we'll do some spin, spin and gab, or spin and chat, spinning and chatting. Um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We've got our brushes clean. Everything's all good to go. We've got to put this away. Um, subscribe to this channel to see more stuff like this. Uh, hit that like button, of course. Hit the bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. You all have a great day. And uh, look at all this fur we collected. <laughs> um, you all have a great day. Happy New Year if we don't talk before then. Uh, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Okay? Bye, my little goldies.